Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us recite Psalm 34 together, verses 1 through 8, or we'll respond by whole verse. Page 627. I will bless the Lord at all. Times his, his praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord, let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and he delivered me out of all my terrors. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me. And save me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. 
to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do, who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. We know these verses well. If you're watching any major sporting event on television or in person, you're likely to see this verse plastered on a poster board or printed on a t-shirt. These verses have a lot about God packed into them. It tells us of a God that loves so radically, so radically that God would sacrifice God's only son to be subjected to the brutality of this world, subjected to rejection. It tells of the gift that God offers the world, something of a future beyond our imaginings of this life, the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation. What comes next tells us about what role we play in this process. This 16th and 17th verse in the third chapter of John is then met with what follows in the rest of this gospel passage proclaimed today as our response to that radical love. A love, again, so radical that one might find it hard to believe. Perhaps we imagine whether or not we would be able to sacrifice a child for the sake of others. But what we have to acknowledge first is that that is an incomplete analogy. It falls short because we know that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God and Jesus, one. One might interpret this as God choosing to love in this way. But 1 John 4 tells us that God is love. It is less of a choice God makes than it is God just being God. Love being love, doing love. So then, the sacrifice God offers us is a self-offering, an outpouring of God, of love, manifested in this world. Our idea of love falls short of this, but our belief is rooted in that radical love. Our response to this love is the choice that we have to believe, or not to believe. It's easy to say either or here. Either you believe or you don't. 
But I can't help but think of this concept of belief in light of the transformation that Christina spoke about in her sermon yesterday. A transformation that takes place when we lift our gaze and set it on Jesus. A transformation that moves one from the darkness and into the light as Nicodemus was moved. Remember, he came to Jesus in the night, the darkness of the evening providing a safe place for safe space for him to come to Jesus and explore curiosity. This initial movement eventually led him to be one of the persons to care for Jesus's bloody and bruised body as he was taken down from the cross and laid in the tomb. Jesus speaks of judgment in this passage. He says, and this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. The Greek term used here for judgment is crisis. It does not refer to one moment of judgment, but rather a continual process of evaluating one's own behaviors, one's own actions, and determining whether they are directed toward light or darkness, toward liberation or oppression, toward life or death. I want to interrogate this binary of light and darkness, though. We often think about darkness as being a scary, ominous thing. Did God not make both night and day? Did God not create everything, both darkness and light? Darkness is both necessary and inevitable. An infant is formed in the darkness of a mother's womb, in a safe, nourishing environment where every intricate system and organ develops. And when the tiny body is ready to emerge from this safe place, the infant must live in a new way, to be and to exist in a new reality. From the darkness, a new light is birthed. To believe is our choice. It is also an action. To believe is to behave and move through this life in a particular way, a way of love. And it is not always easy. But if our actions begin as the gospel began, for God so loved, if our actions begin and are rooted in the love of God, then we are directed toward light. To believe is to engage in the process of asking oneself, is this the darkness that precedes new light? God is not on trial in this passage. This passage calls us into deep self-reflection. God's love, God's gift of salvation is constant. We are the variables in the equation. God does not prevent us from choosing to engage in deeds that are not motivated by love. We choose to live either in the darkness or constantly striving towards the light. The judgment John speaks about is the judgment that we bring upon ourselves in the way that we live, the way that we respond to God's radical love. Will we accept it? Will we choose to look towards life liberation and love. This choice to live in the light and to resist remaining in darkness speaks to our greatest potential. The potential to receive the revelation of God to us in Jesus Christ and to embody that goodness, to be revelations of God's love in the world. This is the way. This is the light of the world, love. It is a call to self-reflection, a call to take inventory of our daily choices. This is a life of belief lived out, and it is free for the whole world to partake in. John shares this hope that is given to the whole world, even those who have not yet believed, but that are still in the darkness, perhaps, being birthed into new light. The choice is always there. Salvation is ours. We need only lift up our faces to the Lord, reach out our hands to accept the gift of God's grace, and believe. As we go about our day, I leave you with a few questions to ponder. How do the choices that we make from day to day reflect our belief in the God who so loves this world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in but may have eternal life.
What are, what are our choices communicating to others, to ourselves? Is it communicating gratitude, praise, honor? Where in our lives might there be a need for God's light to transform us? And remember that God's love surrounds us always, and that there is never a moment, even as we are emerging from moments of despair and grief, that God is not with us, encouraging and loving us towards the fullness of life that he so desires for us. And God steps with us from darkness to light, through the darkness into light, into life. We believe in one God. church, then faithful witness, and they preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, especially Ukraine, Russia, NATO, and the European Union, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially Vladimir and Vladimir, that they may serve justice and provoke the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who study in this community, especially Jane Ogie and Javon Bracey, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who labor to further the mission of the seminary, especially Maria Spellings, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, especially those impacted by the war in Ukraine, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially Sue, Becky, Ellen, Devin, Joanne, June, Robert, Stephen, 
Valetta and Natalia. We pray to you, O Lord, that they may live in joy, peace, and health. For all who have died in the communion of your church, especially Michelle and those whose faith to you is known alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Mark, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and to all our life, to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God is a round. So, Anthony and I have talked about this. Thank you, Anthony, for filling in all quickly on the music. Gospel side. You're going to sing the first verse and go straight into the chorus. Epistle side. You're going to sing the first verse and then go straight into the second verse and then go into the chorus. So we're doing a round, and Anthony, you just kind of roll us out at some point. <laughs> I don't know how you can do that on the guitar, but please do that. There we go. <clears throat> Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us. And together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of life and life, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O oh, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O oh, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin, become subject to evil and death. You, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On night he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread, and give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
gifts of God for the people of God.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God, the source of love, the word of love, the spirit of love, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.